October 10th, 2018, Wednesday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, After 14 years I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up in accord with a revelation, and I presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For unto some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separated himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, If you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. October 10th, Wednesday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Galatians 2, 1-2, and 7-14. Yesterday we heard about how Paul went up to Jerusalem to speak with Cephas and James three years after his conversion. Well, today we begin with the fact that 14 years later, he went up again to speak with the apostles. He wanted to make sure that the gospel he was preaching, that the Gentiles didn't need to follow Jewish law, would not be contradicted. It's not that he feels that he has to get approval from the apostles, but rather he wants to make sure that there's no division within the community. And in fact, when he speaks about the apostles, he speaks about them being so-called pillars, And they're really not as important because his apostleship was just as significant as theirs was. They agreed that those who were not circumcised did not have to follow the law. They were only supposed to remember the poor. Now, remember the poor probably means send some money to the poor community in Jerusalem. It's almost a continuation of the temple tax. Jews who lived outside the Holy Land had to send a little bit of money every year for the upkeep of the temple. It almost seems like that idea. Peter was to be the apostle to the circumcised, Paul to the uncircumcised, almost as if they're two patriarchs. But Peter visited the Gentile Christian community in Antioch, and at first he ate with the Gentile Christians. Now, ate with them could mean table fellowship, 
or it could mean the Lord's Supper, we're not quite sure. Jewish Christian missionaries came up from Jerusalem and reminded Peter he was the apostle to the circumcised, so Peter stopped eating with the Gentile Christians. Now the reason that Jews don't eat with Gentiles is that Gentiles are sinful. They have no way of expiating their sin, so they remain in their sin. It's almost a contagion that you might catch if you associate with them. Peter not eating with the Gentile Christians, he's implying that they're still caught up in their sin, which negates the power of their baptism, which negates the power of the cross. Peter doesn't intend to say that, but Paul points out that that's the consequence of his actions. The Gospel is from Luke 11, 1 to 4. And this is Luke's version of the Our Father. Now, typical of Luke, what is Jesus doing when he's asked to teach the apostles how to pray? He's praying himself. Remember in Matthew and Mark, Jesus prays two and three times, whereas in Luke, he prays 11. Jesus is constantly trying to discern the Father's will and comply to what the Father asks of him. And that includes in terms of teaching the apostles how to pray. Luke's version of the Our Father is a series of petitions as opposed to Matthew's version, which is a completed prayer. Matthew probably put in his gospel the Our Father that they were saying in the community, while Luke includes in his gospel the Our Father that Jesus actually taught. Jesus calls God Father, which is very countercultural. At the time of Jesus, Jewish rabbis spoke about God as being at the other end of the universe. They didn't use very affectionate terms for God. Jesus does. Hallowed be your name, words of praise. Your kingdom come, words of surrender to the will of God. Give us each day our daily bread, as much bread as we need each day, but this also includes the Eucharistic bread. And forgive us our sins as we're willing to forgive others. The idea that in order to receive forgiveness for our sins, we have to open our hearts to the forgiveness that God is already offering. And finally, do not subject us to the final test. The idea that at the end of the world, it'll be a time of tribulation, a time of testing. And we really don't know how strong we are, how much we'll be able to resist temptation. So we ask God to deliver us from that time. And may God bless us.